Hi everyone, this is Abdul from Pythonist. In our previous video, we have created a simple API for books library by using an in-memory list of book objects. In this video, we are going to integrate a SQLite database to this API. So we will get an introduction to SQLite database, how to create one, and make a connection, and then we will understand how to perform queries for CRUD operations regarding our books library. So let's get started. So what is SQLite? According to the official documentation, SQLite is a C language library that implements a small, fast, and a self-contained SQL database engine. SQLite is the most used database engine in the world. SQLite is built into all mobile phones and most computers and comes bundled inside countless other applications that people use every day. In short, it's a file-based database which can be used on different platforms and works very well with small to medium-sized applications. Python provided us with a dedicated module named SQLite 3 in the standard library. So let's create a database and a table for books library. First of all, I will create a new file named db.py. And inside this file, we need to import the SQLite 3 module. Creating a new SQLite database is as simple as creating a connection using the SQLite 3 module. To establish a connection, all you need to do is call the connect method of SQLite 3 and pass a file path. If the database represented by the file doesn't exist, one will be created at that part. If we run this file, you can see the SQLite database file has been generated. Great. Now let's create a table for our Brooks library. In order to create database tables, you need to have an idea of the structure of data you are interested in storing. There are many design considerations that go into defining the tables of a relational database. As you know, we are working with books objects and each object has four attributes, an ID, author, language, and title of the book. So we will create a database table accordingly. We have the database connection. Next thing we need a cursor object. The cursor object is used to execute SQL statements on the SQLite database. So I will say cursor equals to connection dot cursor. Now we need to define the SQL query to create our table. So I will say SQL underscore query is equal to create table book. Then inside parentheses, we need to define all the columns. The first one will be the ID, which is type of integer and used as primary key. It will make the IDs unique. Then I will add author, which is a type of text and not null. Then we will define language and title in the same way. Great. Now we need to execute this query. So we simply need to call the execute method of the cursor object and pass this query. Great. So now if we run this file once again as python db.py, it will create our database table named book. To view the table at this moment, I will use data grip. It's an amazing tool for multiple database management from JetPrints. So I will open it and add a new data source for SQLite. Now we need to select our database file and hit OK. That's great. It's loaded our database. You can find your table under the main schema. Double click to open it. Here you can export your database table. Awesome. Now let's get back to our API we created in the previous video. First of all, I will remove the in-memory list of books. We don't need that anymore. As you know, to make any query to a database, we need a connection. So instead of repeating it every time we need to communicate with a database, we can define it inside a function. So I will define a function named db underscore connection. And inside this function, I'll create the connection by calling the connect method of SQLite and return that connection. But we also need to import the SQLite package. Great. Now let's update our view functions to perform queries. So first of all, inside the books function, we need to grab the database connection. So I will call the db underscore connection function and save it in connection variable. 
And second thing we will grab is the cursor object. Now under the get request we will execute the query to get all the books and save the result in cursor variable. Now we need to iterate through this object and grab all the items in the result by calling fetch all method. And we will generate a dictionary by getting each attribute and save the final list in books. And finally, we can simply return it after encoding to JSON. To post a new book, we need to get the form values as we are doing here. But this time we don't need to define the ID here because it will be added to the database table automatically. So we can remove it. Now we will write the insert query as SQL equal to insert into book and we have to mention all the columns and put the question marks to add values later in a dynamic way. The question marks are actually placeholders in what is known as parameterized query. Okay, finally we will execute this query and pass the values in the form of a tuple. To save the changes in our database table we need to call the commit method of the connection. And then to confirm our request we will grab the ID of this object by using the last row ID attribute of the cursor object and return it as a response. Great. We are done with the two operations. Get a list of all books and post a new book. Let's test these operations before moving further. So once again I am inside the postman. Because at the moment we don't have any book in our database yet. So let's post a new one first. I will select the post method and type the URL as localhost colon 5000 slash books. Then inside the body, we will add our new book values against the keys. If we submit the request now, it will return the ID with the response message. Great. Now if I change the method to get and send the request again, it will return that book. Awesome. Let's try to implement operations for a single book object under the second route. So here inside the single underscore book function, again, we will define the connection and the cursor object. Then under the get request, we will execute the select query with the where clause and grab all the items by using fetch all method. Then I will define a variable named book. Now it read through the results and save the result in book. You may remember that our ID is a unique value column. So definitely we will get only a single record. But that's the way to pass the SQLite query response object. Great. So now if the book is not none, we will encode it to JSON and return as a response. Otherwise it will return 404 error. Now for the put method, we will write the SQL query and after that we will grab the updated values from the request. After that, we can execute the update query and pass our new values along with the ID to the execute function of the cursor object. And of course, we need to commit the changes. Finally, we will return the updated book after encoding to JSON as a response. The last request we need to perform is to delete a book. So under the delete request, I will write the query to delete the book as SQL equal to delete from book where id equal to question mark. Then call the execution function and pass the id of that particular book and commit the changes. Now we can return a simple message and a status code. That's great. So let's come back to the postman and test these operations also. So now I will change the url to slash book and pass an id as zero for example and hit the send button. You can see it returned that particular book. If we change the method to put and click on the body tab to enter new values for this book. After adding new values, if we submit the request, you can see it returns the updated book. That's great. Now for the delete, just change the method to delete and submit the request. It will return the confirmation message for this ID. Great. So that's how we can perform the CRUD operations to SQLite database using Flosk. In the next video, we will integrate an online MySQL database with this API. So stay tuned. If you like the content of this video, thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you will never miss any fantastic video in the future. Thanks for watching.